السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله يا رسول الله يا رسول الله يا رسول الله يا رسول الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed all praise is due to Allah we praise him, seek his aid, and ask his forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and from the evils of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, none can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship, except for Allah, I don't have no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is a slave and a messenger. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون O you who believe fear Allah as he should be feared and die not except in a state of Islam with complete submission to Allah يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيمًا O man can be dutiful to your Lord, who created you from Adam, single person, and from him he created his wife, and from them both he created many men and women, and fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights, and do not cut the relations of your relatives, surely Allah is ever and all water over you. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما 
He will direct you to do righteous good deeds. And he will forgive your sins. And whosoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed achieved a great achievement. And that is, he will be made to enter paradise. And he will be saved from the hellfire. And what an achievement. And my back to proceed. فَإِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ The best of talks, beyond any doubt, is the Qur'an, the book of Allah. وَأَحْسَنَ الْحَدِي حَدِي مُحَمَّدِ And the best of guidance, beyond any doubt, is the guidance of His message. Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. وَإِنَّ شَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْبَثَاتُهَا And by the most evil of all matters in Islam, are the ones that innovate it. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةِ بِدْعَةِ for every newly innovated matter in Islam is an innovation. And every innovation in Islam is a misguidance. And every misguidance will lead to the helper. Ibadallah, brothers. For verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates for us occasions through which we can pump our Iman. And also, he is prompting us to invest into those occasions, especially times or places, or even to sit with certain people to give you knowledge, to maximize your hasana. <coughs> and verily from those occasions that we need to invest in is Yawmul Jumu'ah. And my khutbah is not about the Yawm al-Jumu'ah. But because I can see that some people, maybe they're not aware of those hasanat they are wasting because of not doing what the Prophet of Allah told them to do when they come to the day of Jumu'ah. Number one, people are prompted to come as early as possible. Not with the khatib is already on the pulpit. He lost the hasanat, and that is for those people who come early. He lost to be registered in those records on these angels who sit on the front of the door, registering who comes first. But once the imam says, Assalamu alaikum, he starts his khutbah, they will roll the scrolls and they will sit among the people. He will also incur sayyat. So it's not just losing hasanat. He will also incur sayyah if he did not have anything to do with why he's late and he's coming late for no reason and he's missing the part of the khutbah. He's sinful for that. Because the day of Jumu'ah is not just the prayer, ikhwani. It's a combination of the Jumu'ah, which is the khutbah, and also the prayer of the Jumu'ah. Fas'aw ila dhikrillah. Ya ayuhalladina aman, o you who believe, when the call of the prayer to be called for the day of Jumu'ah, come to the dhikr of Allah. He didn't say come to the salah. Come to the dhikr. And the khutbah is part of the dhikr. So you are sinful if you come late for no reason. Number three, for those who come early, why do they sit at the back? Imagine that I'm giving one million pounds for each person who is coming to the front row. Would he sit in the back? No. So what makes the person sit in the back? One of the two reasons. Either he's ignorant, he doesn't know the reward lies for him in the front rows, or he doesn't want to gain the hasana. He doesn't want to elevate himself in paradise. He's one of those Allah Azza wa Jal did not intend for him good. So he's losing, sitting at the back, and not only that, he's just coming for a ritual. Just to prove that he came to the Jumu'ah. Akhi, the Jumu'ah is something that you need to prepare yourself for it. The day before, I'm coming to the Jumu'ah. He said, the Jumu'ah, I'm going to gain hasanat. So for those as well who come to the second segment of this masjid, it's not correct. This is an overflow. When this is filled in front of the Imam, you go to the second part. But if you want to just sit relaxingly, there's nobody there, and I want to be the first one to leave after the Jumu'ah, then be my guest and sit there. But this is where the competition, where the Imam is, is for those who are knowing the excellence of the Jumu'ah, they will see him fighting, competing to sit in the front. 
But those who do not care, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them understanding and religion. Ibadallah. Yesterday, the moon was sighted, indicating the first night of the first 10 days of the Hijjah, the most that is sacred days and greatest days in the sight of Allah. Did you know that those days are greater in the sight of Allah than the last 10 nights of Ramadan? I'm sure some of us, so many of us didn't know. Why? You could see. Look at the first Jumu'ah of the first 10 days of the Hijjah. The message about two thirds. But when it comes to the last 10 nights of Ramadan, before I start the khutbah, the message is full. The people didn't know. And they don't want to know. If they didn't know because there's nobody to teach them, there's no problem. But if there's somebody to teach them and they want to sit and learn, that's their problem. If I Allah, those 10 days are the best days in the sight of Allah. The last 10 nights of Ramadan is not a match for them. Prophet he said, ما من أيام العمل الصالح فيها أعظم عند الله من هذه الأيام. There is no other days upon which the righteous good deeds to be performed are more rewardable than the righteous deeds which are performed in those days. Meaning the first ten days of the Hijjah. Qalu, companion said, ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله. Not even fighting for the sake of Allah. That means this jihad is not even a match for the righteous deeds performed in those days. He said, What al jihad fi sabillah? Not even fighting for the sake of Allah. And you know, fighting for the sake of Allah is the ultimate. Nobody would put himself and his wealth in danger for the sake of Allah, except that he had done all his ibadah. He'd done his obligatory and he'd done his voluntary and his willing to go and sacrifice himself for the sake of Allah. So even the jihad, those days are better, except for a rare special case, something that normally doesn't take place. A person who is going with his self and his wealth for the sake of Allah, and he fights, but he doesn't come back, he's martyred, and his wealth is gone in the sake of Allah. This is a rare occasion. A rare and special case. Who's among them who would have the opportunity to put himself and his wealth in danger for the sake of Allah? And then he fights and he loses both. This is the one who is better. Ibadallah, those are the ten days. Even the night of Al Qadr is not a match for the best of the days, the day of Nahr. The day of Al Night of Al Qadr, the night of decree. And the day of Nahr. The day of Qurban, the day of Hajj al-Akbar, the greatest of Hajj in that day. Ibadallah, what do I need to do in these days? Number one, dhikrullah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ala unabbi'ukum bi khayri a'malikum. Shall I inform you of your best deeds? Wa azkaha inda malikikum. And the most purified with your Lord and the most that would elevate you in ranks will get you a better palace a better place in paradise and it's better for you than spending in charity gold and silver and better for you and better than meeting your enemies in jihad. <laughs> so you smite them next, and if you kill them, or they kill you. Yes, Messenger of Allah, inform us of that. He said, Dhikrullah, <laughs> the remembrance of Allah, which includes the takbir, the tasbih, the tahdeed, which includes your recitation of the Quran, which includes listening to the khutbah al Jumu'ah. Dhikrullah, this will settle the heart. Just like your car needs a garage to service. Like your car needs oil, otherwise it will run. Like your car needs fuel in order to go. Your heart needs the fuel, and that is the dhikr of Allah. A heart which has no dhikr of Allah is a dead heart. A heart 
which is not responding to call Allah, to call Rasulullah. Ibadullah, some of the Sahaba who are poor came to the Prophet Sallallahu They said, Messenger of Allah, ذَهَبَ أَحْلُ الدُّثُورِ بِالْأُجُورِ The ones who are rich, they have taken all the rewards. Prophet Allah said, how come? <laughs> said, Messenger of Allah, يُصَلُّونَ كَمَا نُصَلُّ They pray like we pray. So I mean that we are equally rewarded. وَيَصُومُونَ كَمَا نَصُومُ And they fast like we fast, the same reward. وَيَتَصَدَّقُونَ وَذَا نَتَصَدَّقُ But they can in charity, because they've got money and rich. But we don't. And they have the ability, because they're financially capable, they are, they to set slave free, and we can't, because we don't have the money. So the Prophet ﷺ, said, أَلَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ Shall I inform you of something? تُدْرِكُونَ بِهِ مَنْ سَبَقَكُمْ وَتَسْبِقُونَ بِهِ مَنْ بَعْدَكُمْ That is, if you do it, you will catch up with those who before you. And you will be even in front of those who come after you. وَتَكُونُونَ أَفْضَلَ And you will be the best of anyone. إِلَّا مَنْ صَنَعَ مِثْلَ مَا صَنَعَ Except for the, the person who did the same like you. Yes, Messenger of Allah, tell us. He said, تُكَبِّرُونَ وَتُسَبِّحُونَ وَتَحْمَدُونَ تَكْبِيرُ تَحْمِيرُ تَسْبِيحُ Allah Akbar. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. 33 times after the prayer. So you do that when you finish the prayer. 33 times each. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Companion was so happy. They went home. And then they've gone back again. Messenger of Allah. For verily our brothers had heard what you told us. So they are at the moment doing the same thing. I mean, you can't match them. They are making tasmih and takbir and tahmih. And they are now, they've got an edge, which is they give in charity. We can't. So the Prophet of Allah, he said, ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءَ This is the blessings of Allah. And he is the one who's got the will to grant it to whosoever he wills. Ibadallah, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, رضي الله عنه, he said, لم أرى شيئاً أنجى من عذاب الله من ذكر الله. There is nothing better than ذكر الله to save you from hell. ذكر الله. These are the days to make dua, to make takbir in various ways. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله. For those who are in the front and came early, forgive me. I have to repeat some of the instructions that I've said at the beginning. I started with almost half of the masjid. Now the masjid is almost full, and also the next door hall is almost full. So I need to remind those who had this habit to come late. Allah Azza wa Jal is telling you, my dear brother, you are the one who's believer. Ya ayyuhal ladina aman, O you who believe. Ida nudiya li salati bi yawmi al-jumu'ah. If the call of the prayer for the day of the Jumu'ah has been established, fas'aw ila dhikrillah. Come to the remembrance of Allah. Come to the remembrance of Allah, not come to the salah. The remembrance of Allah, a combination, khutbah, Plus the Salah. You are sin, Akhi. If you came late to the Jumu'ah and you have no reason except to maximize your profit, or maybe you are doing a job, forget about your job. This is the best job that you want to invest in to come as early as possible to the Jumu'ah. SubhanAllah, we start with half of the masjid and now almost the masjid is full. For those brothers, I urge you because I cannot be a believer until I love for you, but I love for myself. Person has to take the Jumu'ah seriously. Doctor came as whatever he wants. Whatever he wants, I understand if you have a special reason. But not everybody's got a special reason. And that's why you're not going to go forward. You're not going to learn. If my khutbah was how to make a million. If I was a millionaire, 
and I have a, a plan to make you a million and give you a millionaire and make you a millionaire. And my khutbah starts, I believe that everybody will come. He will not hesitate to be the first. And listen, how can I become a millionaire? But I'm giving here no money. I'm giving better. Qal Allah, qal Rasula. Do you want our Muslim to prevail? Do you want the enemies not to dare to attack us? Do you want our brothers in Gaza to have victory? It's not the march. It's not the protest. It's the masajid. Where are you in the masjid? Ask yourself. How many people come to the Fajr prayer? How many? Ask yourself. If we are like this in the Fajr prayer, Wallahi, nobody would dare to their finger on Gaza. But we are letting ourselves down. That's why Allah is letting us down. We have to change ourselves from today. Ask yourself, are you doing what Allah told you to do? To Bakr, Prophet Sallam, he said, Bakr, come early. This is one of the things that the people have left. They just come at the end. Come just to do the prayer and go. It's a ritual for him. Last person to come, first person to leave. La ya. Let you be the first person to come, last person to leave. That's the winner. Bad Allah. For those who are standing on the door, brothers, there is space for you maybe on that side. You have to sit down. Make space for yourself. Make two rakah. Do not stand the door anymore. Black everybody, please. I've got so much space in between. Brother, don't sit with like crossing like the brother, you. Don't sit like this. Make a space for others to sit next to you. Everybody. Everybody help one another. Come on. Come forward. Come Allah. Don't take an acre of a land. Come forward. Ibadullah. Two men came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Are asking him about something which is important for us to learn. What is the best deed that we can do during those days? Nothing more than the Hajj. The Hajj has everything in it, including the Takbir. Ibadullah al thaqafi and Ansari came to the Prophet of Allah. And the Prophet of Allah said to them, If you wish, I'll tell you what you came to ask about. And if you wish, you could go ahead and ask me. So the Thaqafi told the Ansari, You go ahead and ask. So the Ansari said, Messenger of Allah, tell me what I came to ask about. Prophet of Allah, he said, he came to ask me about eight things. He's not a mind reader. His revelation came to tell the Prophet of Allah what was in the mind of that person. So he said, you came to ask me, number one, you are intending hajj. Coming from your house, heading towards the haram, how much reward are you going to have? You are asking me also, when you make tawaf al qudum and then you do the two rak'ah after that, how much reward are you going to get? You came to ask me, that is when you make safi and sa'i between safa and marwa, tawaf between sa'i, safa and marwa, what do you have as a reward? You came to ask me, when you go to the plain of Arafah, what do you have as a reward? You came to ask me, when you throw the jamara on the day of Minas and the day of Al-Adha, what do you have as a reward? You came to ask me, when you have your sacrificial being slaughtered, what do you have as a reward? You came to ask me, what reward you're going to get when you shave your head, indicating the end of your hajj, what do you ask me as well? You came to ask me about what reward you're going to get when you make tawaf al ifawah Wallahi, Messenger of Allah, I came to ask you about these things. Prophet of Allah, he said, as for you heading towards the haram, every stride of your camel, if you have a, a hasana, and will also ascend to be removed. Ibad Allah. Now we're going not on camel. We're going to go by plane, or by trains, or by car. Don't worry. Calculation-wise, you're going to get a lot of hasana. Imagine how many strides the camel does from one place to another. So maybe it's going to be every spin of a wheel, every nautical mile. Allahu A'la. And as for the person making tawaf al qudum and then making the two rak'ah, it's like freeing one slave from the son of Ismail. And his tawaf between Safa and Marwa, then it's like freeing 70 slaves from Ismail. What is so special about the slave and son of Ismail? If Allah, first of all, we don't have a slave to set free. So that's your opportunity. Number two, those are the most expensive slaves. 70, if you have done the Safa and Marwa, then ah, as you are in Arafah, behold. What does it make you know about Arafah? Allah descends. A descendant which is suitable to his majesty. And Allah will boast before his angels. Reminding them what they have said. When Allah created Adam, 
ام لسان اتجعل فيها ما من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك are you gonna make a creature or lord in this earth that is will spread blood and spread mischief in the land while we glorify your name and praise you i know what you don't know this is what they didn't know those are the offsprings of that creature adam they're coming here not to spell blood not to spread mischief in the land they're coming to seek my mercy they came with faces covered with dust with uncombed hair from all over the globe seeking my mercy behold telling the angels behold if their sins is to be as many as the drops of the rain or the particles of the sand or the froth the foam of the sea i have forgiven for all of that the day of forgiveness and that's why the prophet of allah he said ma min yawmin akthara min an ya'tik allah fihi 'abdan min an-nar min yawmi arafah there is no other day upon which allah would free people from the hell fire that he does on the day of arafah it's more than ramadan more than night of al-qadr on the day of arafah this is the day allah chose to speak to musa alayhi salam allah talked about in the quran wa atmamnaha bi ashr this is the days also that the also includes this day of Arafah which Allah made it to have the, the revelation of the following verse Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam al-dina This is the verse if you read it and you contemplate and you understand it then you will know what that sister who's American 85 plus she embraced Islam once she recited that verse you will know that before her Kaab of Numata, the Jewish rabbi, when he read that verse, opened his eye upon his lap. Kaab of Numata, he comes to Umar al-Khattab. This hadith is like Bukhari. He came to Umar al-Khattab. He said, oh, leader of the believers. He's a Jewish. Oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen. Ayah, a verse in your book. That means it's not his book yet. If it's to be revealed to us, the Jews, he's a Jewish. And we will take that day upon which it was revealed as a day of celebration. And what he said, which day you talking about? Which verse you talking about? He said, verily, God Allah, and then he quoted. That means that Jewish rabbi, to recite that verse, Today, I have completed for you your religion. And I accomplished for you my favors upon you. And I chose Islam to be your religion. It is not first ayah of the Quran. This Jewish rabbi has to read Fatiha with contemplation, Al Baqarah with contemplation, Ali Imran with contemplation, and Nisa with contemplation, and the first and the second, and also two thirds of the third verse of Al Ma'idah to arrive to that verse. Shame upon us to call ourselves Muslims, and some of us even did not read the Fatiha, or Al-Baqarah, or Al-Nasa, or Al-Imran, or he heard about even the Surah Al-Ma'idah. Not only that, shame upon us, if we read these verses on Suwar, and we did not contemplate like that Jewish person who contemplated, he listened, he learned. And what he said, Wallahi, I know. The day upon which this ayah was revealed, and I know where Umar al where the Prophet of Allah was. It was revealed on the day of Arafah. And it happened to be the day of Jumu'ah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was in Arafat. He was doing his farewell hajj. He went Allah. This day of Arafah, the ninth day, is a day that we need to make sure that we maximize our takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alham. All these days. Number one today until the ninth day. Preparation for the best of the days. Yawm al-Nahr, Yawm al-Qurbani, the old sacrificial, the day of sacrificial Allah. This is the day of al-Nahr. This is the day of al-Hajj al-Akbar. Yawm al-Nahr. Allah says, wal-Fajr, wal-Ayad al-Ashr, wal-Shafri wal-Watr, wal-Fajr, by the dawn of the day of Nahr. Wal-Shafri wal-Watr, by the even number, by the day of al-Nahr. So Allah mentions the day of Nahr a number of times in the Quran. But Allah, let's maximize our hasanat. And let's learn for those who have financial means and they are independent. They are the head of family or they are independent without a family. You must sacrifice an udhiya. And if the udhiya comes compulsory upon you, then you may not cut your nails or cut your hair from anywhere or even peel off the skin. From the moment that is we sacked the moon that was yesterday night, until your udhiyat is to be slaughtered. 
If you have cut your nails already because of ignorance, don't worry. But hold on until the end. If your order became just compulsory upon you, you receive some money in the middle of those days, abstain with cutting the nails from that day. But if you did it deliberately, you are sinful. And your ubhiyah is valid. Allah Azza wa Jalli wa lakum. And yarzuqana al-hajj. To give us the hajj, insha'Allah. Ala arafah. Fi Mecca. Fi Mina. Asaluhu subhanahu wa ta'ala. An yumitan ala la ilaha illallah. Admin at the back. Are we okay to start? Allahu <laughs> Akbar. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawm al-Din, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een, Ihdina Siraq al-Mustaqeen, Siraq al-Nadina An'anta Alayhim, Wairi al-Maghubi Alayhim, Let me 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سور مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف مصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Because we don't want to start a bid'ah in this masjid, ikhwan. This person who is raising his voice with Allahu Akbar, there's no need for that. Because my voice through the speakers are louder than your voice. So I don't know where you're taking this habit from. So we don't want this habit to start spreading. So if the Imam's takbir is audible to everybody, it's not supposed somebody there to repeat the takbir. I don't think the admin had asked for you to do that takbir. So please, Jazakallah khairan, do not do that again. And please ask the admin for something like this.